Oh, so my conclusive test of the Sanwa, the Gen 1 silent, Gen 2 silent buttons. If this is a 10 on the loudness scale, the Generation 1s are like a 3 on the loudness scale, and these are like a Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you know, Victrix has recently sent me the laser engraved version of the Victrix Pro. This is a design that I drew and there's a video, a separate video where I'm showing, I showed you how I actually drew this design and came up with it for this stick. But what's really interesting is that they also sent these Sanwa silent buttons. Now these buttons are not just the original silent buttons that we got before. They're not the gamer finger buttons, which are also very, very quiet. This is indeed a brand new Sanwa design. It is called the Sanwa Silent Generation 2 button. And as far as I'm aware, the main difference is that the material is different. This is actually a slightly softer plastic. But I can tell you right now, it feels very, very similar to a normal Sanwa button. It just sounds completely different. In a previous video, I also showed you the Victrix Pro with gamer finger buttons, right? And the gamer finger button, and also Sanwa Silent Generation 1 buttons, which were very, very quiet. But they didn't have as much travel because they had a foam pad. These new Sanwa Silent buttons don't have a foam pad, so they should have the full, I guess it's two millimeters, of travel. So I figured since we've got this stick here, let's just change it so that we've got Sanwa Silent Generation 2 buttons, two Sanwa Silent Generation 1 buttons, two gamer finger buttons, and two of these original Sanwa buttons. So I've got the Victrix Pro stick right here. Let's take the cable out so that we can actually unplug it. We're going to flip it open and open up the case and we're going to take out six of the buttons. I'm actually gonna leave these two as the original Sanwa buttons and then I'm gonna change the top six and the front two. This is gonna be a speed job. I'm gonna do this really, really quickly. Where's my pocket knife? Get my handy dandy Swiss friend. So we get the cables out. All right, so I've taken the brain, <laughs> the nerve cable out of the stick. Let's go ahead and take one, two, three, four, five, six buttons out. And I'm gonna do so very carefully because you never know when you might need these buttons for other projects. Since I've got them side by side, let's compare the original Sanwas to the silent ones. This is original. And this is the silent. <laughs> oh, it feels, it feels, oh wow. I really wanna feel what an original Sanwa silent button feels like by comparison. All right, this is a standard Sanwa gold button that I modded with the foam pad to make it a silent button. So standard Sanwa button, generation one silent, generation two silent, let's hear them. These sound very similar, but they feel completely different. So continuing on with the button removal process. Ah, this one I broke, no it didn't, okay. Ooh, I, um, God. I'm so good at this now. I've made so many videos where I changed the buttons. I've managed to change all six buttons without breaking the buckles. Someone pat me on the, I was gonna say clap me on the back. Pat me on the back. Now let's replace them with these silent buttons. As you can see, they come with this plastic that actually says quiet button on the top. You can peel that off, enjoy this. And as you can see, these ones also do not have any foam pad inside. If I just push this out, Oh, look how easy that was. On this button, as you can see, there is the rubber e plastic cap, and it does feel kind of soft. You can bend it like that. So even if it does hit the other plastic, it probably won't be that loud. This feels a lot like the original housing of any Sanwa button. I don't think this has actually changed. I'm gonna put them here in the cross and circle positions. Oops, didn't go in. There we go. Ooh. And I got two of these. Generation one silent buttons. Let's put these in as well. All right, I've actually run out of screw type buttons. So I'm gonna take two out of my other stick. How about these front two? All I want for Christmas is my two front buttons. All right, two buckle type buttons out. Let's put them into the new stick. I think we're gonna have a very close match. I think any of these buttons is probably going to work out. And last but not least, let's put this cable back in place. Time to close it and get that satisfying. I need to put this arcade lever back in. The weirdest Frankenstein stick you have ever seen, it's probably not the weirdest, 
Gamer Finger, Sanwa, Sanwa Silent Generation 1, Sanwa Silent Generation 2. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. It's time to hear how they sound. First, original Sanwa. Generation 1, Silent. Generation 2, Silent. Huh? It's actually louder. And Gamer Finger. Oh. Alright, let's hear them one by one. Original, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gamer Finger. Hmm. The Generation 1 buttons are definitely quieter, aren't they? But the feel of Generation 2. So much nicer. I don't know if I'm making it up in my mind, but definitely feels different to me. If I if I don't listen to them, can I tell the difference? I need louder music. Oh! So I just churned up the music on my PlayStation so that I could not hear the buttons, and I cannot tell the difference between these buttons and these buttons in terms of feel. They sound completely different, but... So my conclusive test of the Sanwa, the Gen 1 Silent, Gen 2 Silent buttons, and I'll talk about Gamer Finger later, is that these buttons actually feel almost exactly the same. Now, if I had to actually pump up my music really, really loudly so I wasn't swayed by the sound of them, but I tried them by going one by one, and I also try them by doing one, two, three. When I know I do my target combo, you can hear that they sound completely different, but they feel. The biggest success for these Sanwa buttons is that, okay, so the texture feels a little bit less shiny, but not by much. Feels, the texture feels almost exactly the same. The button feel is, I would say 98.5, I don't know, 95? I would say it's 95% the same feel as these, these Sanwa original buttons. I actually could tell the difference between Gen 1 because it doesn't feel like it goes all the way down. I was finding that my fingers wanted to do the full travel, and when they weren't able to do so, they were, hit, they were coming to a stop earlier than expected, and I think that extra deceleration was causing it to actually hurt my fingers a bit more when I was playing it over a long time, because I actually had them all. I had six buttons set to Sanwa ju Silent Generation 1 buttons for a little while. Just from listening to it, and then also if I check here on the waveform, and you can also just tell with your own ears, these are literally double, if not even a bit more, louder than the Sanwa Silent buttons. So if quietness is absolutely of paramount importance, then you probably still want to go for Sanwa Generation 1. I don't even know if they sell them still. I think they just, I think they do still sell them. But if you want the best balance of feel, so you don't have to sacrifice having a shorter travel distance, which for Sanwa buttons, I don't think it really works. I think for a Sanwa button, you want that full travel, travel, it just feels nicer. If this is a 10 on the loudness scale, the Generation 1s are like a 3 on the loudness scale, and these are like a 5. So you're going back up to like a 5 in terms of loudness. And that's before we've even discussed the Gamer Finger buttons, because listen to the Gamer Fingers. I mean, it's also going to depend on what switches you have in here. I have the Cherry MX Speed Silvers. If I really had to argue, I would say that the Sanwa Silent Generation 2 feels closer in feel to Generation 2's original buttons than Gamer Finger. The Gamer Finger does have a slightly mushier feel than Generation 2. It's just that in terms of quietness, the Gamer Fingers are on par with the Generation 1, if not even quieter. So we're talking loudness rating 10, 5, 3, 2, maybe 
Uh, but as I mentioned before, Generation 1 has like higher pitch frequencies, the Game of Fingers has lower pitch frequencies. Same thing with actually Generation 2. Generation 2, loud, not so loud, very quiet, very, very quiet to very quiet. And that's not just in terms of pure decibel volume, we're talking about in frequency content, because actually the main issue for me isn't really so much the decibel level, but the frequency information in the original Sama buttons. The high frequency content and the mid-range frequency content is what is really pinging in my ears right here. It's like super wide band. You'll, you'll hear guitarists talking about this sort of thing, or especially electroacoustic artists when they're talking about like narrow band, wide band, broad band. There's all the bands basically. They're just talking about frequencies, right? That's extremely wide band noise. This is slightly narrower, but it still has high frequency and low frequency content. It's got the thud and the tap. This has less of the thud and more of the tap. And this has less of the tap and more of the thud. Let's see how they feel in game. It might just be the switch. Don't forget that not only does the Game of Finger have speed silvers in here, but all of these summer ones are using the original OBSF. I don't know what the name of the micro switch is, but this is the OBSF button, right? It's got the Sanwa micro switch, which is the different to which is different to the Cherry MX Speed Silver. These speed silvers are, are fast and springy, but not as springy as a Sanwa button. These Sanwa buttons really are springier than the, the switches that I have in here. So the nice thing about, obviously, with Gamer Finger Buttons is you could put different switches in here. You don't even have to use Cherry MX. As long as they're the right shape, you can use those buttons that are not made by Cherry MX that just look the same. So you got a lot of customization options with the Gamer Finger. And as you know, I've been using them for the past three or four weeks and I love them. So I don't actually know if I would change them because for the quietness, for the quietness, it's almost worth it going for the slightly thuddier feel of the Game of Fingers for a little more volume. So we're going from like a 2.5 to like a 5 in terms of volume. It feels so much more like original Sanwa. That's really nice. And then this, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I would not use my Victrix with the original Sanwa buttons. I know that other people seem to have absolutely no problem with it, and it's, that's great for you, but not for me. I just cannot. I think I really want to experiment with more switches. Originally, I had these Cherry MX Blue switches in here. I've moved over to Speed Silver, which I feel like they're less springy. They don't have as much spring in them, so I might change out the Speed Silvers for buttons that have more spring, but I don't want the click anymore. Even though the click felt nice, doing these EX moves was a little bit more difficult when I was using the blue switches. I Here's my verdict. I will not use Generation 1 anymore. Um, I realize that other people may like them still, but now that I've got these options, I'm not going to be using Generation 1 Sanwa anymore. I'm also not going to be using Sanwa button, orig original Sanwa buttons either. Too loud, not enough travel. Too loud, not enough travel. Generation 2 is almost perfect, actually. I I cannot find really anything to dislike about this button except that just there are quieter alternatives now. So we're talking about slightly springier because I've got the Sanwa switch in here plus just the shape of the button and the feel is m small percentage different to the Game of Finger. I, I need to experiment with slightly faster, springier switches in here. I think now might actually be a good time to deliver a bit of a final verdict on the Victrix Pro arcade stick. So I've been testing, and as you know, there's like at least eight or nine videos now which feature the Victrix Pro on this channel. So I've been extensively, extensively testing it, and on pretty much all of the live streams I've done on Twitch and on YouTube for the past two or three weeks, it's been with the Victrix Pro. And I have almost exclusively for the past couple weeks been using Gamer Finger Buttons. What I kind of think is that for this stick to sell the best, it's probably still better to go with just the standard Sanwa button. Why? Because people are used to that sound. 
in a loud environment, when you're at a tournament and you go and pick one of these up, you're gonna go, hey, that feels good and it sounds good. But as a consumer, I personally think that the first thing that you're gonna end up wanting to do, pretty much anyone who lives in a house with more than one person, or if you have thin walls, or if you have dorm mates, roommates, things like that, things like that, people like that, you're probably almost 90% going to want to switch to these Sanwa Silent Generation 2 buttons. I don't need to explain any more than that. You can hear it for yourself, there is a lot less of that wide band, high frequency information. This would just drive me insane if I continue to use the original Sanwa buttons. The nice thing is that when I put my headphones on, I really cannot tell the difference between these two buttons. There is, if you really, really, really analyze, it does feel a little bit different. I don't feel nearly as much. I feel 80% less, easily 80% less impact pain from the Generation 2 buttons. For that reason alone, and for the quietness as well, I 100% would buy the Sanwa Silent Generation 2. And this almost never happens, by the way. I almost never finish a video saying that I would buy or would not buy something. If they had more colors that I liked, I would almost 100% definitely buy these Generation 2 buttons. It just so happens that I've also got the Game of Finger buttons. And on a loudness level, 10, 3, 5, 2.5, maybe even 2 at times. I really just see no need to escape my Game of Finger buttons. I just like them so much. I think I'm just going to stick with Game of Finger buttons. So the next time you see me streaming, I will most likely have transferred all of my Game of Finger buttons from this Victrix Pro Stick onto this one, though I am tempted Basically, it depends on if I have time. If I have time, I may do a stream or a video where I switch all of the buttons in this stick for the Sanwa Silent Generation 2. But at the current moment, I don't really see much need for them since I've got Gamer Fingers and they feel... they feel brilliant. It's just that the Sanwa... You cannot deny that the combination of the rigid body with this button that does not have too much plastic on plastic contact, which is also a slightly different material, so it's quieter and doesn't transfer the impact to your finger, but does impact, does impact enough that you feel the bounce of it. Plus on the inside, it's got the Sanwa micro switch instead of the Cherry MX switch. It does retain almost all of the spring the springiness that you get from an original Sanwa button. So if you have always liked Sanwa buttons, and I know there are many of you who have been playing on Sanwa buttons for 20 years, maybe even more, on these original buttons which probably haven't changed in 20 years, you may actually well be best off just buying Generation 2 silent buttons. For this rigid body stick, it brings it to the perfect level of impact and bounce. It feels really, really nice. It's almost too much impact resistance on the Gamer Fingers to the point that you don't have as much tactile feedback from the impact of the button. It's almost a little bit too mushy. So we'll see. Stay tuned for a future Nihongo Gamer video and or stream where you will see which buttons I have changed to. Currently, I'm thinking I'm just going to leave the stick with the Gamer Finger buttons because first of all, it's just massively customizable so I can change all the switch. I could have Razer switches, I could have Cherry MX switches. A lot of people have been suggesting makers that are not Cherry MX that make switches that I could try and hear that are quiet and springy and clicky and all sorts of things. There's a lot of stuff that you can experiment with, with on the Gamer Fingers. But if you're a Sanwa fan and you are worried that there's not a button option for you on the Victrix Pro that feels good, sounds good, and isn't as loud and annoying and painful as the original Sanwa buttons, there is a solution that makes this stick awesome. Because I did have maybe 50 things about this stick of which 48, 40, 
Yeah, 48 of them I loved and wanted this to become my main stick. But the pain of this button and the loudness of this button meant that it was only a 48 out of 50 for me on, the t on, on things that I wanted to like. And I guess if there's only one th more thing that I would love to be able to change about the Victrix, which, which, which just can't change, is the ability to wipe this art off and replace it with something else. But in a way, in a way, actually maybe it's nicer to have the laser engraving be more permanent. So you're stuck with that one design and it really defines you and you become more solid solidified as a character. I don't know, I, I found it very interesting to talk about. So there you have it, the ultimate test I could possibly do, I can't think of anything else I could possibly have tested, of Sanwa, Generation 1 Silent, Generation 2 Silent, and gener uh, not Generation 3, sorry, not Generation, and Gamer Fingers. And personally, I'm probably gonna stick with the Gamer Fingers, but a close, very close second, honestly, maybe even better than the Gamer Finger, but not quite as quiet, are these Generation 2 Sunla silent buttons. They feel awesome, they sound quiet, but not quite as quiet as the Gamer Finger, not quite as customizable. I'm gonna stop talking because this video has gone on way too long, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're interested in the Victrix Pro, there's plenty of other videos, so check out the playlist. I don't know if there's a playlist, but I'll make a playlist. Check out on my channel, I've got other Victrix Pro videos. If you're interested in how I made this design, I've made a separate video where I go into detail of how I designed and drew the artwork for this stick and got it printed with a laser. Victrix Pro went and, sorry, Victrix Pro, Victrix, Victrix went and laser engraved it for me and then sent it all the way to Japan for me. And then even though they went to all that trouble, they didn't even ask me to make a video. They just said, look, no, we just made it for you. Just enjoy it. You don't have to make a video, but here I am making a video because I really want you to see it anyway, because of course, if you, <laughs> if you get something like this made for you, how can you not want everyone else to see it? So I'm really, really happy with it. Whew. I mean, it's not a conclusive review, but this is about as conclusive as I think it's going to get for me with the Victrix Pro Arcade Stick. There were a lot of things that I wanted to like, and I liked almost all of them, and I think with the Sanwa Generation 2 silent buttons, I think those issues have more or less been solved. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video, and join the Discord and stuff like that. See ya.